Hi, this talk is about multi-timescale LSTM for rainfall runoff forecasting. My name is Martin Gauch, and this work is in collaboration with Frederick Kratzer, Gray Neering, Jimmy Lin, Zeb Hochreiter, Johannes Brandstetter, and Daniel Klotz. The setting that I'd like to talk about today is how can we use deep learning models, or in particular LSTMs, to forecast runoff? The way we usually use LSTMs for runoff simulations in general is that we have a history or historical records of meteorological forcing, forcings, things like temperature, precipitation, and then we might also have um, runoff observations. But all of that data we only have for the past, whereas in this forecasting setting, our goal is not to predict runoff in the past, but runoff in the future. So um, in this talk, I'd like to go through a couple of possible solutions of how can we apply LSTMs to the setting to generate um, forecasts for of future runoff values, given those historical records, and then potentially also using um, forecasts of these meteorological information um, that come from, from other models. And the first kind of very simple solution is, well, we can just use all the historical data that we have and process it in our LSTM, just feed it into the LSTM, right up until today where our historical records end. And then at this point, we just generate the, the runoff predictions for the next couple of days or hours or whatever time scale it is that we're processing at. And obviously this solution has, has the advantage. We can use all, uh, all the historical records that we have, but it has the great disadvantage that it doesn't have a clue about what ha what's happening in the future in terms of temperature and precipitation and whatever other variables we're using, because it doesn't get any input of, of future meteorological forecasts. Um, so this means that for short lead times, say just one day ahead, this method is actually working quite well because um, the historical records are good predictors of what's, what's happening tomorrow, essentially. But as the lead time increases, this model um, breaks down because it, because it just uh, sort of degrades to, to mere guessing because we don't have any, any information about the future. So for larger lead times, this solution has quite, quite some disadvantages, which leads us to the second solution, which is actually to make use of forecasting data. So the idea is that for, for many variables, at least for many metrological variables, we actually have uh, metrological forecasts. And so it seems intuitive that we should actually make use of this data um, when we generate runoff forecasts. So the idea of this solution is, again, we use historical records, we feed them into the LSTM. And then once we reach the point today where our historical records end, we just switch to the forecasting products and just um, keep ingesting the, the corresponding forecasting product into the LSTM. And this way, we can generate um, future forecasts of runoff, given both historical records of meteorological forcings, as well as the, the corresponding forcings, uh, the corresponding forecasts. But this method also has, has some disadvantages. The first one being um, that it might actually happen that we don't have forecasts for all of the um, meteorological variables that we, that we have historical records for. So in this toy example, I've highlighted precipitation, but it might be any other variable where um, we do have historical records and we'd like to use those, um, but we don't have forecasts of that variable. And so in this, if that is the case, we can actually use even the historical records of that variable because um, we'd be lacking an input to the LSTM um, for the future time steps. So this is, uh, this is uh, not ideal. Um, the second disadvantage of this model is, or this solution is um, that at least in the simplest setting, we're not actually able to use runoff observations that we have in the past. So as you can see here, um, outlined by this orange box, um, this solution is um, pretty much identical to the, to the simulation setting that we have in, in reanalysis um, settings where we predict um, historical stream flow. And it, especially it doesn't use runoff observations because if you were to ingest um, runoff observations into the LSTM in the, for the past, 
we'd be lacking this, this corresponding input variable in the future, similar to the way it was for the missing meteorological forecasts. Um, so in the simple scenario, we wouldn't be able to ingest um, runoff observations into the model. There is, however, a way to solve this, and that's um, to essentially use auto regression. What I mean by that is that we do feed runoff observations into the model in the past, and then for future values where we obviously don't have these values because that's what we're trying to predict, instead what we do is we ingest the model's own predictions. So at time step t plus one, we ingest the model's prediction from time step t. And so we have, um, that's kind of our best guess at what might be the, the runoff observation for that day. And so in that, in that way, we actually do have a, um, a variable that we can feed into the LSTM for future time steps. And this actually works quite well. But still we have this, this issue with um, lacking forecasting variables for meteorological information, for example. So the third solution um, that I'd like to propose actually here is um, based on what we call multi-timescale LSTM, which is something we introduced in a recent paper. And originally it was designed for prediction of runoff at multiple timescales. So the way it looks is something like this, where we have an LSTM-based architecture and that um, consists of multiple branches. And each branch generates runoff predictions for a certain time scale. So in this case, we have one model that generates both daily um, runoff predictions in the lower branch, and it also generates hourly predictions in the upper branch. Um, and it does so by uh, starting to process um, the inputs at the daily time scale. And at some point, um, it sort of hands off the processing to, the, to this hourly LSTM, which then continues processing um, the sort of the remaining time steps at the hourly time scale, and therefore it generates hourly predictions. And now while this was originally intended for, for different time scales, we can actually sort of repurpose this architecture to um, run of forecasting. And we can do that simply by changing the, the definitions of these branches from daily and hourly to past and future values. So then it looks something like this, and we can, we can simplify it a bit. So it looks like this. And now the idea is that we have this, we have like two, two LSTM parts. And the first LSTM um, is responsible for, for the past. So we ingest all the, all the information that we have from the past. We process it with this, this first LSTM. And then once we reach the point where we switch to any future inputs, we switch, we hand off the processing to the second LSTM that then processes whatever data we have available um, for the future. So back to our schematic from before, it would look something like this, where the orange box already indicates that we are now able to um, process essentially all of the data that's available because everything in the past is processed by the first LSTM. So that includes any historical meteorological information, but it also includes any historical runoff observations. And then once we hand off to the future, um, sort of the future LSTM, we don't have runoff anymore, so we can't use that. But we do have, um, or we might have um, forecasts of that meteorological information. So we can use whatever forecasts we have. We can even use, um, if, we, if we have multiple forecasting products, we can use all of them in the, in the second LSTM to generate the runoff predictions for the future time steps. And it turns out in our experiments that this actually works, works quite well. So we've done experiments on the, on the CAMELS data set with, with about 530 basins. And to simulate this forecasting setting, because CAMELS doesn't actually include any forecasting products, we used the NLDAS forcings as historical records, as like the reanalysis product. And then because we didn't have any forecasting data in the, in the CAMELS product, we instead simulated this forecasting setting by using um, much lower quality ERA-5 land data. Now, because ERA-5 land also isn't actually a forecasting product, um, but it's just lower quality. So this means we don't see the effect of um, decaying quality of the, of the actual forcings product with increasing lead time, but we do see the effect of 
switching from a high quality to a lower quality um, input product. And we see the effect of no longer having runoff observations, of course. So <clears throat> in this plot, we see the median NSE across all those basins as it um, develops with increasing leak time. And the first solution that I proposed, which was not using any future data at all, as I said before, it works fairly well for, for a lead time of one day because we have observations or the, the LSTM gets the information from up until the previous day. So that's kind of a good predictor for, for T plus one. So the, the NSE is, is quite okay. But as lead time increases, um, the performance of that solution really drops really quickly. Whereas the second solution, which was not using runoff observations, but just switching to the forecasting product, um, for starting with time step today plus one, that works quite well because it, um, it of course has the historical information, um, but it also gets the future information. So the, the NSE doesn't drop that much with increasing lead time. Um, however, because it doesn't use any um, runoff observations, it's not as good as the, the final solution, which is the multi-timescale LSTM. The multi-timescale LSTM, as I said before, is able to use all of the historical data, including runoff observations. And so it starts off with a really high NSE, and it doesn't drop as fast as, um, as the, say, the first solution, because it does actually use, um, it does use meteorological forecasts of the future. OK, so to summarize, um, in this talk, I, I've proposed multi-timescale LSTM for forecasting of runoff because it allows us to leverage all the available historical data as well as all the available um, future data um, that, is, that is available as forecasts. And lastly, a point that I didn't mention yet is that we can actually um, combine this, this forecasting idea with the setup that multi-timescale LSTM was originally intended for, and that's, um, well, prediction at multiple timescales. So we, um, we could actually go and um, build a model that does these forecasts at multiple timescales simultaneously so that we, within one model, we get um, forecasts for, say, daily as well as hourly um, uh, runoff. And then we can, we can do things like incentivize the model to generate consistent forecasts. OK, um, I welcome you to join our live session on April 29 at EGU. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening.